So today we're just going to talk about, you know, why would you use a two-handed rod? And we're going to obviously show how to use a two-handed rod. So does anyone, to start off, does anyone have any questions at all? That we can kind of, I know you asked one question, what is a switch rod? Well, what's the difference between a switch right. and, and a, a spay rod? A spay rod is, a, is generally a full length rod. They're usually, spay rods are usually classified 12 foot, let's say, and longer, mm -hmm. about. Uh, switch rods are usually under 12 feet. This is an 11 foot 9, uh, 11 foot 9 inch rod. Okay. And really what a switch rod is, it, it's a small spay rod. It's small enough to where you can use it with either two hands. It has the capabilities of two hands, but it's small enough and light enough to use with one hand. So that's that's what a switch rod is. That's a switch. Not to be correct. This is a switch rod. Not to be confused with a switch cast. Two different. Even though you know, switch cast and switch rod are just two completely different things. You can use a, a switch cast with a spay rod. Okay. What a switch cast is, just to show you, it's actually cast I've been using. Uh, this weekend, a switch cast is basically just an inline, it's an inline spay cast. I'm not changing direction. I'm just casting from where I'm picking the lineup. That is called a switch cast. Um, and a switch cast, I use a lot in salt water because very often we're not changing, uh, we're not changing direction. Uh, this weekend, a lot of the places we fished, we had a beach, not a lot of current moving from left to right, so we were just simply, you know, not changing direction. And if you want to change direction, you can, and that's that's where you're going to actually spay cast. Okay, a spay cast is des is is um, the definition. What I would call the definition of a spay cast is a basically a roll cast with a change in energy and direction. That is what that would be the definition of a spay cast. Um, so if I'm I'm going to just start off a little bit and just show you kind of how to build a spay cast. And I got a sink tip on. That's why I got to roll it up first. But a roll cast. Again, we're just, a roll cast is a static cast. We're just bringing the rod back low, we're elevating the rod into a firing position, and we're rolling it out. That is considered, that is considered a roll cast. Where a spay cast is, or a switch cast is, it's energized. You see the difference there? I'm putting a little bit of energy going back to where, to where I get an anchor. Okay, the anchor being the tip of the line hitting the water, and I'm also getting what's called a D loop. Okay. The D loop is what's really loading the rod in a spay cast. Okay, it's just like doing an overhead cast or, or a single hand cast overhead, where the line needs to straighten out in order to load the rod. When you're spay casting, the whole idea is you don't want to do that because you want to be able to cast in tight quarters and you don't want to have to always extend the line behind you. So, so a, when we when we go to do a spay cast, it's very important, and, and I do this even single hand casting overhead, is I always keep the rod tip low out in front of me. If I take my target, let's say I'm, I'm casting this way right now, if that's my target, from there to 90 degrees, that rod, even beyond 90 degrees, that rod is always tracking below, for the most part, unless I'm deep in the water, the rod tip is tracking no higher than my head. So you'll notice today as I cast, there might be times where I do a lift first before I do my, my actual back cast, where the, the rod tip will go above my head, but when I actually do my stroke going back, the rod tip is never going to track above my head. And let me show you why that's important. So, if I, if I bring the rod up and I keep it high, what happens is that line all hits the water at the same time. You see that? I'm going to drop my back cast into the water every time. My D loop is going to become, the bottom of my D loop is going to become flat. And that's all going to hit the water at the same time. The whole idea with a spay cast is you want the anchor in the water and the D loop to be aerialized. The only way to do that is to keep the rod tip tracking low out in front of you. So, so I got to keep that rod low. You see how the, that gives me an anchor? And I have a D loop that was aerialized for a split second there. Obviously, I have to go forward before that D loop uh, collapses and hits the water. So, if I do, let's say, a snap T and I set my anchor, the rod's always going to track low and then I lift it up to go forward. It's always low to high. Very important, low to high. And when you, when you make a when you make a D-loop, it needs to be lined up. It's just like a normal uh, overhead cast with a single-handed rod. You need to line your back cast up with where you're trying to cast. And it needs to be lined up two ways, both horizontally and vertically. Okay? We're going to line the D-loop up 
horizontally by what I consider stopping at 430, okay? And if we look at our target as being 12, so that's 12 o'clock where I'm casting right now. Here's 3 o'clock, okay? We're just looking at a clock flat on the water. 12, 3, there's 430. So if you watch, when I come back, for the most part, that rod every time is going to stop right there, right about 4.30. You can see the D-loop. You see how the D-loop is pointed yeah. at 6 o'clock? So now my D-loop is lined up horizontally. And uh, common mistakes that I see is what's called over-rotation. It's bringing the rod tip back too far and the fly line coming on the inside of 6 o'clock. The line needs to be at 6 o'clock, which is opposite of 12 o'clock, right? If I over-rotate the rod tip, the, ro the line's going to come to uh, 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock which obviously is not lined up with 12 o'clock. So if I, if I over-rotate, then I need, to, I need to cast that way. Not that I should over-rotate at all, but if my D-loop's lined up here, then I need to be casting there. But right now, I'm trying to cast there. So if you over-rotate, your cast is going to fail. You're going to lose the tension on the rod, and the cast will not work. So that's, that's, that's how, when I say lining the D-loop up horizontally, that's what I mean. It's getting that 6 o'clock every time. If I go to cast that way, then I need to turn my D loop back to cast that way. If I want to cast this way, then I need to get my D loop. And it'll be hard for me to change direction this way as a right handed caster, but I need to get my D loop more that way to go that way. You can see as I change direction here, I'm just turning my D loop, getting my D loop lined up with my target. Question for yep. you. Yep. It looks like when you come back, you got a little bit of an extra pull to pull the line behind you. Uh, when you say extra pull. Well, you're coming back and then you get a little, little flip and, you'll, and then the line is coming back. Yeah, I'm going to go over that. It's, okay. it's, uh, it's, it's what I would consider proper acceleration. You need, in order to, all of this will work. If there's one, there's the most important thing in casting, single hand, double hand, I don't care. I work with a lot of people. I teach a lot of people. The biggest thing, I, the biggest mistake I see especially for beginners, is they overthink and it causes hesitation. And when, you and when you hesitate, you'll never load the rod. You have to, when you commit, when you go to do your stroke, whether it's a backstroke, a forward stroke, you have to commit to it. And you have to flow through it and you have to accelerate the rod tip. If the rod tip doesn't accelerate, you're not going to load the rod and the, and the line's not going to go anywhere. Your rod can track absolutely perfect. You might have the, the perfect stroke. Nice straight line path, which we'll get into. But if you don't accelerate through that line path, you're not going to get the rod to load, and the line's not going to go anywhere. So um, what you're seeing there, what you're talking about there, is, is you're seeing that a little bit of acceleration at the end of the stroke. I'm, I'm ha I have a positive acceleration in order to keep the line moving and in, in order to bend the rod. If you look at the fly line, the fly line, okay, I don't, if I had a fish on the end of the line right now, yeah, it'd be really easy to bend the rod. Or if it was stuck on the bottom or something, yeah, I could bend the rod. All I have to work with is the weight of this fly line. In order to bend the rod with the weight of this fly line, I need to track the rod tip gradually faster and faster away from the fly line. If there's any hesitation whatsoever, the fly line catches up to the tip of the rod or, or catches up to the rod and the bend comes out of the rod. So if I hesitate midway through my stroke, I'm going to completely lose my load in the rod and the cast is going to fail. Does that make sense? Yes. So, <laughs> so I'll demonstrate that. So here, just to show you, I don't want to go out a little bit. Andrew, what weight rod is that? Oh, uh, this is a seven. <laughs> <laughs> so if I were to demonstrate acceleration, Watch how I go really, I'm just going to do an overhead cast. Watch, if I go really fast but I slow down, look how the line didn't go anywhere. You'd think being as fast as I went, that line would go flying back. But because I started fast and ended slow, I never loaded the rod. I actually loaded the rod early and I came, so what happens is I loaded the rod early and I got slower, 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 the rod, line's catching up to the rod, catching up to the rod. By the time I stop the rod, there's no bend in it. The line's going faster than the rod is. Whereas, watch the difference now. Look how slow I went, yet how the line flew back. It's simple acceleration. I'm accelerating the rod tip. That is the number one key to learning to cast quicker, like getting your cast down faster, is 
don't overthink just do the like think about the stroke that you think you're supposed to do prior to doing it and then just commit to it whether it's right or wrong if you accelerate it'll be easier to diagnose what you're doing wrong than if you don't accelerate I don't care if it's a single hand cast or a double hand cast a spade cast overhead that's what you really need to work on is making sure that you're positively accelerating the rod tip that's that's the biggest key to really to really getting your cast to uh, develop fast for you um, so that was a little bit of a tangent but I think it's an important one uh, that'll that'll really help you guys um, so let's go back to uh, lining up the D loop we talked about horizontally stopping at 430 let me show you a couple common mistakes that I see uh, would be again over rotation would be coming back let's say that in a case of a two-handed rod is the bottom hand flying out too much you can see my rod is now pointing at seven o'clock or six o'clock the rod again should be at six at uh, 430 look at here how the D loop is pointed that way that cast would have failed if I had tried to go forward in that direction it wouldn't the cast wouldn't work so the first thing you can do uh, in learning to uh, to two-handed cast is to not use a lot of bottom hand. I recommend, and some people will tell you to the contrary, but I recommend don't use don't use a lot of bottom hand to start with. Learn to learn to, to track, learn to control the bottom hand and use the top hand to make the cast. Because it's a lot easier to stabilize the rod if if one hand is stable. Because now all you have to focus on is all you have to focus on is the other hand. If I'm moving two hands, there's a, look at look at how just a little bit of movement of these hands, how much the rod tip moves. It's very important in casting, single hand, double hand, again, it doesn't matter, is to control the rod tip. If both my hands are moving a lot, my rod tip is going all over the place. Literally, one inch of movement of, of the bottom of my hand is a foot or two of movement on the rod tip. So it's very important, again, I like to really stabilize the bottom hand and use the top hand to make the cast. 